Live from our seven Tasmania studios. Your nightly news with Louise Hubar begins now. Good evening everyone, thanks for joining us. First tonight, a 19 year old man has received critical injuries in a crash at Huntingfield late this afternoon. For more now, we're joined by our reporter John Hunt. John, what can you tell us? Louise, police were called to the scene here at Huntingfield Avenue near the Channel Highway just before 3pm. They say they believe the car slid off the road up an embankment and into a tree, also damaging a fence. The driver, aged 17, and a front seat passenger are being treated for injuries, but they're not considered serious. However, a back seat passenger, aged 19, has been rushed to the Royal Hobart Hospital and is being treated for serious injuries. While a cause is still yet to be determined, police are once again pleading with drivers to be alert and aware on the roads. But this sort of driving behaviour is becoming more and more common. You know, this year to date, we've had 34 road deaths in our state compared to 16 of last year. A vast majority of all these accidents utterly unnecessary. They're all unnecessary. The road has been closed for a number of hours as forensics and major crash go through their investigations. It's expected Louise the road will be fully reopened in the next hour or so. All right, thanks for that. John Hunt reporting for us there. Labor member for Pembroke, Joe Seeker, is quitting the Legislative Council, moving interstate to be with family. Her departure next month will trigger a by-election to fill the empty seat, which, if won by a Liberal, will see Labor's numbers drop to just three. Seeker is the second member to leave the party in less than a year, after Dr Bastian Siddell's shock resignation in December. She says she's sorry to be leaving before her term is up. A woman in her 70s has died, bringing Tasmania's COVID death toll to 109. 1,410 new infections were recorded overnight, with active case numbers sitting above 10,000. 36 people are in hospital being treated specifically for COVID. The state government urging Tasmanians to get a vaccination as soon as possible. A 32-year-old man from Old Beach has caused $80,000 worth of damage after crashing into an Ampol service station last night. CCTV footage shows the driver of a red sedan losing control of his vehicle while turning left onto the Brooker Highway. The vehicle ploughing through two petrol bowsers. No one was physically injured, but the station's owner says it's a reminder for drivers to slow down on busy roads. Labor has issued a please explain to Education Minister Roger Yench regarding the future of student works. Labor's Michelle O'Byrne says the community has lost confidence and trust in the government. A cloud of uncertainty hangs over the future of student works. The Northern Vocational Education Program is being questioned by the opposition about its longevity. The Minister has uh, indicated that the funding has been continued or extended to the end of the year. I don't think that's true. That's the money that they already had till the 30th of June that they're allowed to continue spending. In a letter penned to the Education Minister, Labor member for Bass Michelle O'Byrne says the community now has a trust deficit in relation to the ongoing future of student works. He said that the teaching position has been extended to the end of the year. As far as I'm aware, that position ends at the end of term three. Um, the grant funding hasn't been extended and that's how they fund the other staffing positions to provide that safe environment. Chair of the Student Works Board, Rose Parker, has confirmed an extension of funding for the program manager position until the end of the year. Minister Roger Yench says the funding was never in question. Funding for um, student works will continue through to the end of the year and the Department of Education is talking with uh, the leadership of student works right now about where we go from there. The Minister's made it very clear with respect to student works uh, that uh, it has a secure future and uh, allegations to the contrary are uh, unfounded. As to securing the future beyond the end of this year, Rose Parker is hopeful a meeting with the Minister will come to fruition before the end of Term 3. While Roger Yench says he's committed to revamping the 40-year-old institution to ensure the program is fit for purpose. McKenna Bailey, 7 Tasmania News. 
The state government has released the 10-year vision for the future of Kanamaluka Tamar Estuary. The plan focuses on creating community spaces while preserving natural values for future generations. Two key priority areas including uh, building a closer relationship with the river, uh, providing recreational uh, and uh, uh, activity on the river itself, getting closer to the river so that we can enjoy it. The second priority area consists of a wetland restoration program which will support river health as well as managing sedimentation in the estuary. Organisers say Tasmania's ninth mid-winter festival has been a roaring success after last year's COVID-restricted event. The final day is switching up the scenery to entertain families during the school holidays. Braving the poor weather forecast to soak up some family-friendly folklore fun. Droves of gumboots and puffer jackets flooded the Huon Valley for the third and final day of Willie Smith's Midwinter Festival. We've got a circus uh, where kids can learn circus tricks and get trained in circus activities. Terrapin Puppet Theatre are here and, uh, and culminating in a pie eating contest later in the afternoon. Parents perusing the stalls and sipping on hot apple cider as the children took turns in the face painting chair. They showed us like all the palettes and we got to choose what we wanted. It was fun and the face paint was very cold on my face. Among the crowds are pagan themed costumes as well as giant entertainers towering over the children. Young man have your flower and grow and be happy. It's amazing. It's amazing? Yeah he made this for me. The festival nearly sold out on Friday and Saturday with tickets capped at 1700. 20 percent of people here have come from interstate, about 6% of those have come from internationally, from the UK, from Malaysia, uh, even the USA. Employees working hard to ensure the event didn't add to Tasmania's already high COVID statistics. We've got fantastic volunteers that are going to extra lengths to make sure that people are safe and everything's hygienic and and uh, we don't get any uh, carry-on effect for COVID. Celebrating this year's success, the Apple Shed is already planting ideas for next year. Brianna Boylan, 7 Tasmania News. The Hobart Chargers winning ways in the NBL1 men's competition have continued, defeating Knox to record their 11th win in a row. Both Northern sides also recorded victories to boost their finals hopes. Hobart is in the middle of a hot streak and looked keen to continue that form last night. Froling decided to respond, yes. Bottom of the net, Harry Froling. A blistering 51 point to 28 first half, giving them a commanding lead at half time. AJ Harris in the thick of the action. Move and yes, gets the three to go and Craig Simpson has seen enough. Their dominance in defence and transition continuing to upset the Raiders into the third. Harry Froling's purple patch also continuing. Froling gets cooped. Step back, yes. Oh, nasty basket there, Harry Froling. Getting... The Chargers eventually getting it done 103-83. to 83. In the women's, Hobart couldn't match Knox. The Raiders making the most of their chances in a low-scoring affair. Inside, good ball movement here by the Raiders. Getting the looks they want. Corner three in front of the bench. That one drops for Paige Burrows. The Chargers recording double digits in just one quarter, eventually going down 50 to 33. Up north, Northwest and Diamond Valley's faint final chances went on the line. After a tight first term, the Thunder broke the game open in the second. Sean McDonald making his presence known with 23 points. Northwest running away with the game in the end, scoring a 90 to 61 win. Drives, kicks out Woolley, Chilcott, three is good! And Launceston were too strong for the bottom placed Eagles in the women's game. A 30 to 19 first turn from the Tornadoes setting up the win. Keely Froling once again having a night out, scoring a game high 26 points. Mariah Payne also contributing with 23 of her own. Against it, Payne won't, won't hesitate to shoot. Ah! Oh! Another three-pointer from Mariah Payne. Launceston holding off a determined Eagles 87 to 73. John Hunt, 7 Tasmania News. In the NPL, Launceston City have won their second game in a row, defeating Olympia 2-1 last night. 
After a cagey start, City took the lead just after the half-hour mark. But it didn't last long, with Olympia striking back and levelling just four minutes later. The home side stealing the result after half time, which saw them, saw them move within two points of fourth-placed South Hobart. South, meanwhile, were held to a one-all draw by bottom-placed Riverside at Darcy Street. Tasmanian Tigers have helped Hampshire defeat Lancashire in a dramatic English T20 domestic final overnight. Ben McDermott top scored for the Hawks with 62 from just 36 balls, helping them reach 8 for 152 over from their 20 overs. Teammate Nathan Ellis had the job of bowling the final over, with Lancashire needing 11 to win. He appeared to have done his job, but as the team started celebrating, the umpire called a no ball. They were cuddling each other. They were half lifting the trophy. But um, umpire Lloyd has to pull them back. There wasn't much line there. It was all dirt. So I thought, gee, it's, pretty, it's a pretty good call. Um, but it's not yet. Yeah, they've gone upstairs and looked at it. Ellis kept his cool second time around, avoiding any late heartbreak. Hampshire winning by just one run. Good evening. A top of 12 degrees in Hobart, Burnie and Devonport today. Launceston, 13. 15 at Friendly Beaches, Mariah Island 14, Strawn 11 and 4 in Liawini. The satellite pictures show frontal cloud crossing over the state during the morning, followed by waves of cold cloud during the afternoon. A large frontal cloud band is extending over Tasmania and Victoria and arching across the bite. And tropical moisture from the Indian Ocean is generating a thick band of mid to high level cloud over parts of WA and into South Australia. Tomorrow we see a cold front east of Tasmania extending into Victoria and New South Wales and towards New Zealand. Southwesterly winds of 20 to 30 knots reaching up to 40 about the south and southeast during the morning. A gale wind warning has been issued for the east coast and southwest coast, while a strong wind warning is in place for much of the state. There's also a bushwalkers alert for the western and central plateau districts. A road weather alert has been issued for parts of the state. While well, there's a sheep graziers warning for the Midlands, East Coast, Upper Derwent Valley and South East Districts and a minor flood warning for the North Esk River. A morning shower or two in Hobart tomorrow, Dover 7 and showers easing in Ouse. Morning fog and partly cloudy in Launceston, 10 in Devonport, Scottsdale cloudy. Cloudy and 9 in Burnie and Stanley, showers easing in Strawn. 9 in St Helens, Swansea early frost then cloudy and 6 in Ross. Possible light showers about the far south and east coast on Tuesday, fine and mostly sunny elsewhere. Wednesday, fine with widespread cross across the state. And similar conditions on Thursday, 12 in Launceston and Hobart, 11. 26 in Cairns, Tomorrow, Sydney, a possible late shower, 10 in Melbourne and 29 in Darwin. And right now in Hobart at 6 and mostly cloudy, Launceston 8, partly cloudy, also partly cloudy in 8 in Devonport and Lou, there's a few cold starts coming this week. Certainly is, it looks absolutely freezing thanks for that Victoria. And that's all your news for this Sunday evening, thank you so much for joining us. Kim and the team will be back with you tomorrow, have a nice evening, Good night.